as we've explored the labor market, we found that our analysis looks a lot like it does in any other market. Just like with Coke or pizza, the market for labor has supply and demand and an equilibrium price and quantity. But remember something else we learned about product markets. Sometimes competition isn't so perfect. Indeed, we spent a lot of lectures talking about monopolies, or what happens when there's only one supplier in an industry. There's a similar concept in the labor market called monopsony. A monopsonist is the single buyer of a factor of production. So imagine you have a nursing degree and want to work as a nurse in a town, but there's only one hospital there. In this case, the hospital is like a monopsonist. What does this look like graphically? Well, let's start with our typical model with the labor market's competitive. We have two graphs here side by side. On the right is the supply and demand for the labor market as a whole. Let's say the equilibrium is at a wage W. On the left is supply and demand for the individual firm's labor market. Here the supply of labor is a horizontal line. It's perfectly elastic. The reason is the firm in question is too small to affect the market wage. If a firm offers less than the market wage, no one will work for the firm. After all, workers could cross the street and get a better paying job for someone else. So what does the firm decide to do? It hires the number of workers where its labor demand crosses the market wage, here at QC. OK, so what if the firm's a monopsonist? Consider the example of a hospital hiring nurses and assume the hospital is the only one in town. It wants to hire nurses, but it has to pay them all the same wage or they'll get upset. Remember also that these nurses have nowhere else to work. So the choice is either work for the hospital or don't work and take leisure. Now the hospital's decision actually determines the market wage. Just as a monopolist is a price maker, not a price taker in the market for goods, a monopsonist is a wage maker, not a wage taker. So imagine the hospital wants to hire one nurse. There are lots of potential nurses out there. Some would work for a low wage, and some who wouldn't give up their leisure unless the wage was very high. So to hire the first nurse, the monopsonist just needs to offer a wage high enough to convince the first nurse to give up leisure time. What if the hospital wants to hire two nurses? Then they need to raise the wage. The next guy values leisure time a little more and needs a higher wage to convince him to work at the hospital instead of staying home. Using the same logic, we draw out the entire labor supply curve. The higher the wage, the more nurses are willing to work for the hospital. So assume the hospital wants to hire a second nurse. This creates a problem. The hospital can't give the new nurse a higher wage than the first nurse, at least in our model, because it would create perceived unfairness. As a result, the marginal cost of hiring the second nurse is higher than that of hiring the first nurse. The second nurse's marginal cost is not only the higher wage you have to pay him, but the extra wage you also have to pay the first nurse. It's a poisoning effect, just like a monopolist faces in the market for goods. In a monopoly, to sell one more unit of a good, the monopolist has to lower the price to lure a new consumer. But if the monopolist lowers the price for that extra good, then it has to lower the price for all the previous goods it was selling. The new lower price poisons all the previous units. The same idea holds for monopsonists hiring workers. So we can trace out a marginal cost of labor, and it's actually always above the labor supply curve. Like any firm, the monopsonist wants to hire the number of workers so that the marginal cost of labor equals the marginal benefit of labor. What's different about the monopsonist is that the marginal cost is above the labor supply curve. As a result, the monopsonist in this case hires L1 workers which is lower than L star that he'd hire if he chose workers so that demand equals supply. What's the wage for the nurses at this hospital? Is it where the marginal cost crosses the demand curve? No. The monopsonist choice of labor is determined by where marginal cost crosses the labor demand curve. But the wage is determined by where the labor demand crosses the supply curve, not the marginal cost curve. So the wage is down at W1. It's lower than it would be in a competitive labor market here at W star. So that's a brief look into how monopsonies work. The three key things to remember are, first, a monopsony is like a monopoly, but for demand for an input, like labor. Second, under monopsony, less labor is hired, because each additional worker means the firm has to pay all the previous workers more. Third, 
the market wage rate is lower than under a perfectly competitive labor market.